three, two, one. Did it. <laughs> Hardly. Three weeks have gone by now. I know. Wow. Good afternoon. It's Robert and Julia Miller with the Jay Patel Group and Rethink Real Estate with another exciting real estate update. Exciting. It's been three long weeks. What an adventure. Yes. Yes, it was. We decided to extend our trip a little bit. Well, we didn't have much choice. <laughs> um, sort of. Because we were in Canada, we had to test for COVID to fly back to the United States, and I unfortunately tested positive. So we had to stay on the ship for an extra seven days. So Of all the times for him to get COVID, that was the time he picked. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what was supposed to be a 10 day vacation ended up being a 18 day adventure. Yes. But uh, hey, we are back and wow, it's been interesting to see there's been a lot of changes in real estate. So we're mm -hmm. going to go over some of those today. Yeah. We will share some of those travel adventures coming soon on our other channel, Sea Days. Um, uh, so watch for those adventures. And uh, yeah, we are on episode 79, so welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe here, there, wherever yeah. however you're watching this episode. It's greatly appreciated. Yeah, we have uh, the regular news to cover, a regular inventory and interest rates, right? Correct. And then um, we also go over a joke to start us out with and history today in history or this week in history. And then uh, we also this week have some information from our Cromford report, which is an expert that we look to to see what's going on in the market, kind of summarize where we're at, what we're seeing, and what it means, and looking forward, what it could mean. Right. So. All right, let's get going. You got a joke oh, for I us? Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of uh, words of advice. Mine's not a joke either. This. Time. Okay. It's an observation. Never be afraid to try something new. Remember, amateurs built the Ark, professionals built the Titanic. Ah, good point. <laughs> good observation. So there, there. you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a thought too. Um, I thought growing old would take longer. <laughs> it sneaks up on you. It goes really, really quick. <laughs> it does. <laughs> All right, moving All on, right. let's do a little bit of history for the week. Um, 2004, former President Ronald Reagan dies June 5th from Alzheimer's disease. Uh, uh, yeah, that made me sad. I yeah, a lot of people. He was, yeah. he was a, a lot of people's favorite president, was, for sure. Yeah. Uh, 1982, on June 11th, the film E.T. is released in oh theaters. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, 1973, Secretariat wins the Belmont Stakes June 9th to win horse racing's Triple Crown. Okay. One of the greatest horses of all time. Mm. 1968, President, uh, presidential candidate Robert Kennedy is assassinated mm. June 5th in Los Angeles by Sirhan Sirhan, a Palestinian. Yes. Uh, 1966, the NFL and AFL merge June 8th and a sports dynasty is born. <laughs> the Green Bay Packers started winning Super Bowls. Uh, 1948, pilot Chuck Yeager breaks the sound barrier, sound barrier. June 10th in an experimental jet. Boy, that guy was brave to get into some of the... Uh, he was just willing to take chances. It's awesome. 1944 on D-Day, Allied troops stormed the beaches June 6th June at 6th. Normandy, France. Yeah, and it was D-Day yesterday. Yep. 1929, Vatican City becomes a sovereign state mm. enclave within the city of Rome. Yes. June 7th, and finally 1850. Uh, I'm sorry, 1654. <laughs> couple, a couple centuries before yeah. 1654. Louis the Fourteenth is crowned King of France on June seventh. Uh -huh. Busy, busy uh, time of the year, I guess. Those are all really important dates. Yeah. yeah. All right. So moving on, a little bit of uh, news on the economic front. Uh, right. Everybody's probably heard we did uh, add three hundred and ninety thousand jobs in May. Uh, hourly right. earnings did increase 0.3% or 5.2% year over year. 
Um, that kept unemployment at 3.6 percent. That, according to CNBC, okay. um, still fighting inflation, uh, and we did see slight sure. easing inflation easing the personal consumption expenditures. PCE. Thank you. <laughs> The uh, expenditures price index, the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge, rose 4.9% in April, but that was actually a slowdown from the 5.2% in March. So, yeah. Um, that and also, according to, to CNBC. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to yeah. be a long, painful process. It's not going to be overnight. So, um, we're going to talk about interest rates here. Yeah. Uh, Shanghai reopens a punishing two-month coronavirus uh, lockdown in China's largest people. city was mostly lifted last week. Um, yeah, I don't... God bless them. Kind of flew under my radar that it was two months. Mm. Wow. Uh, the massive yeah. city's decrease in both production and demand disrupted supply chains and further rocked economies around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, um, we're that according to Reuters. That. Right. A little housing news, uh, and we got some very interesting numbers to talk talk about. Mm -hmm. um, finding balance overall for sale home listings rose during the last week of May. Uh, yes, more did. sellers and better housing market balance may be, a, may be good for both buyers and sellers alike, but according to Realtor.com. We're going to get into some of those inventory numbers here in a little bit. Well, that's kind of a macro thing too. That's Realtor.com, so that's United States wide. We're going to look at it more on a micro scale. Right. We're going to look at the valley and how this yeah. uh, inventory adjustment uh, plays out. Uh, apartment incompletions. You know, there's a race to provide rental properties and okay. apartments. Uh, are springing up everywhere, but there are some problems with uh, supply chain issues. Mm. Uh, they were the likely culprit as a number of multifamily housing completions declined in the fourth quarter of 2021, okay. that according to iOnHousing.com. Uh, regulatory news um, again, inflation is still, excuse me, pumping along despite recent signs of slowing. Inflation is growing at its fastest rate in 40 years, mm -hmm. with the average price of a gallon of gas at $4.76. That's up 13% from a month ago. And we're at $5.23, or 534 actually. Is it that high? I we remember 519. Is it going up even more? I was just looking, remembering the news. We were watching the, oh, the news okay. last night. They're talking, you know, valley wide averages. Crazy. Uh, well over six dollars a gallon in California. In California, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was according to CNBC. Uh, administration plots inflation plans. Um, admitting her 2021 assessment of inflation is transitory, and I remember reading this, mm -hmm. uh, was incorrect. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Yellen last week introduced White House strategies to fight rising prices, including efforts to lower prescription drug costs, reduce the deficit that's a good thing and boost domestic oil production that's wow. another good thing um, yeah we wish that she was right on, on on a lot of those predictions we don't care that they're right but we wish that she was right yeah. that it was transitory and yeah. that it wasn't going to continue but yeah it definitely in, got underestimated drug costs in the last two years i know for my prescription it's gone up fifty dollars a month Thankfully, we have, we've learned how to kind of sandwich between, well, our insurance doesn't even cover it actually, but it's a discount card through the drug manufacturer and uh, good old good RX. Yeah, um, we do like good RX. That's just been, uh, sandwich those discounts and worth, worth a little bit that you pay for it every month. Yeah. So. Okay, um, policymakers predict more hikes and they've been talking about this and uh, members of uh, um, the Fed, uh, Mary Daly, uh, Loretta Meister, and uh, the Vice Chair, Lael Brannard, all made statements last week supporting additional interest rate increases. So, uh. lacking ample evidence that inflation is in retreat, uh, all expressed the likelihood of several 50 base point increases in the upper months, coming months, not according to CNBC. Several? Well, we knew there was going to be at least one. They had six more meetings, and we figured a quarter point, 
and then there would probably be a couple of 50 point, but I think they're going to accelerate Ooh. that and just go 50 point right wow. off the bat to try okay. to get a little bit of momentum towards the reduction in inflation. Lock in those interest rates because the interest rates will respond to that. Yep. We're seeing lenders offer longer and longer lock in times available. I've even said I've even seen three hundred and sixty days, three hundred and sixty five days or whatever. Yeah, there's a couple programs Crazy. from builders yeah. and uh, we'll get into that a little bit, but we're definitely seeing builders being a little more Mm -hmm. aggressive and a little friendlier to to uh, um, people to bringing in their realtors buyers. too yeah. yeah so all right uh, do we want to move on to our comfort report information yeah. why don't you go ahead and cover that okay um, I think our notes are pretty much the same I have both of our notes in front of us uh, we always listen to Tina Tambier um, of the Cromford Report, and she does a magnificent job of Thank you, Tina. covering the statistics, helping us uh, peel back the onion to better understand what we've been experiencing and what we can expect to experience. Um, she herself doesn't believe that the prices will continue or that the number of listings will continue to grow. We've seen inventory in the valley just kind of keep growing an 11.2 percent which is not a huge amount but it's it's more we're we're getting to where um it's more than it was last year which is good we need more inventory um but she says she doesn't believe it will continue rising we don't have desperate sellers yet so people aren't saying right. oh i'm gonna put my house in the market and hurry up hurry up and sell because people have got plenty of equity and if they don't feel like they're going to get that out of the market or they don't feel like they can make a move yet in the market then they just won't you're not seeing panic you know? sellers no they're uh, they're not panicked yeah there's no reason to sell they're, unless the they have sky a reason. falling folks or just there's not many of those right. out there and, and something to <clears throat> keep in mind we've talked about this in the past but Typically, the year starts out very, very strong, mm -hmm. and then once we get into the beginning of summer, uh, it tapers off, and the rest of the year, uh, prices decline a little bit, list number of listings decline, inventory goes up, uh, and we kind of just taper off into the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then after the first of the year, everything picks back up, and we are very strong and then it just tapers off that's the the traditional model mm -hmm. last year was an anomaly it's one of only five times since they've been recording it that this happened but the second half was actually stronger than the first half of the year right that's not normal and it is again it was an anomaly and we are back to more historic normal and market, yeah traditional and expected uh, numbers and right. statistics that we're seeing and that's kind of what you're Great covering. Great segue <laughs> because uh, accepted contracts are down by 11.3 percent down 16 mm -hmm. percent from last year right. at this time so, and these again are May statistics um, that we'll be covering. Uh, there's only a few days so far of June so we don't have anything for June yet so uh, active supply, um, so what's active on the market between 400,000 and 1.5 million, which is kind of the bulk of the market, right. is up by 174%. Wow, that's a lot of new inventory. <laughs> and we're going to go increase. over some numbers mm -hmm. and compare some. One interesting thing with us being gone three weeks, able to pull out uh, what we reported three weeks ago and compare it to what it is today. Ah, and and it's see some pretty interesting staggering. numbers. Yeah, that will be interesting. It's going to give a little yeah. backbone to that number. And keep in reporting. mind, we're seeing more builders, builders having some inventory now, so they're putting that on the MLS. Right. So those are factors that are um, affecting it. Um, Spec homes, so. I got another advertisement from one of the local builders that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, um, they have spec home inventory now. <laughs> yeah, inventory. They had five or six homes house, that are available right now. That. They're complete, done, and if you want to pick them up, they're available. They're available, yep. Uh, an interesting thing that she noted was Sun City and Sun City West have more listings going past 60 days on the market. Definitely um, seeing that which on is interesting. daily report. What um, that says to me is that the people that are just putting their house on the market or their property on the market and not fixing it up any, not, you know, 
staging it, not doing much other than, well, let's just put it on the market. It's clean and tidy. Um, maybe it's not being photographed very well, or maybe it's being photographed very well, but it's not raising the buyer's interest enough to get them to go look at it, to get them to put an offer in anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's what it says to me anyway. Is that kind of what you get out of the yes. Sun City, Sun City West? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're, as real estate agents, um, we are definitely going to have to get back to our basics and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our traditional hard work to, to get a yeah. good, uh, print a flyer, have an open house, it, it, you know, have <laughs> a place <laughs> definitely ready for high quality photos. You have to compete yes. Yes. and we're going to be, you know, our negotiation skills now are going to go back to what they should have been, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, getting creative again. Yeah. There's basically been no, the, the sellers tell you what they're going to accept and five people put that offer in and yeah. you know, there's really no negotiation. Well, we're going to see a little bit more of that coming back yeah. to uh, uh, normal expectations. So demand um, is decreasing. Listings um, under contract is down by 45%. It dropped 36% in 16 weeks. Yeah, it was pretty rapid. That it was, was like, one, it just kinda one thing that uh, Tina touched on was that, you know, this is normal market but mm -hmm. she said it has happened very very rapidly so and that statistic is for listings between 300 and 400,000 so it's kind of the busier part of the market basically mm -hmm. uh, supply is still low obviously um, at the time of doing this um, online zoom meeting there was 13,270 listings and that's active and coming soon listings. Right. Um, so demand is dropping some is what we can get out of that. Median home, median days on market has increased 11 days. Yeah, it's not <laughs> To me that much, was kind of laughable. But it is, you know, <laughs> days on market uh, is still, if the home shows extremely well and it's priced correctly mm -hmm. it's gone in a matter of days that yeah. hasn't changed 11 days is not very long no I mean, it's but not long <laughs> well i'm seeing you know 60 days yeah 45 days mm -hmm. uh 80 days you know i'm seeing yeah in yeah. some cases um more difficult homes are taking a lot longer to sell yeah. so so bottom line out of those things is we're no longer frenzied in a lot of the valley. Mm -hmm. um, she looked at different pockets of the valley um, and here in the northwest valley and west side of the valley ma the majority is hotter. <laughs> not hot, but hotter. Right. Not frenzied, but not but hotter. Frenzied. <laughs> so we're still in a hotter market than just hot. Right. So um, and she kind of went through the crop Cromford Market Index and things like that. There's still a, a big delta between um, demand, the demand index and the supply index. They're they're nowhere close. When they're close, um, then it's a balanced market. Is essentially what you can get out of that. Uh, let's see here. Rentals on the market are increasing. We've talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a higher number of rental listings. Leasing for less than list price, 41%. Yeah, so, so don't just be because, afraid to negotiate yeah. if you're looking for a rental. Yeah, just because you see that higher list price for a rental doesn't mean you have to pay that necessarily. Um, make an offer. Right. Uh, let's see here. One bit of advice that uh, Tina had for sellers is said, this is not a time to test the market. An example, uh, let's list it 50000 over oh. the best comp that yeah. we can find and see what happens, see if somebody falls in love with it. This is not the time to be doing that. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the, this decline actually began in late March. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it's, it's more traditional this time of year. It doesn't mean we can't get the home sold. It's just going to take longer, and you have to have more realistic uh, expectations. Yeah, more traditional expectations. Yeah, more right. realistic. Yep. So um, prices are expected to continue. In summary, prices are continue to rise, but more slowly. Right. 
demand dropping since actually February. Mm -hmm. Supply started rising about 10 weeks ago. Uh, this was interesting the way that she kind of broke this out. Under $400,000 listings. Uh, demand is dropping. Supply is still very low. Right. There's limited things to pick That's from. That's a sweet you know. spot. It yeah. is a sweet spot. Yeah, it's a lot of your first-time home buyers, and you know, people that are maybe on fixed incomes. So yeah, um, above four hundred thousand, supply is rising sharply, and we see a really sharp increase mm -hmm. in that, like we talked about. Demand is still very high, though. So right. That is kind of the summary. Did you have anything to add? Uh, she kind of left off with, are we in a correction? Or are we approaching a correction? Well, there's some things that have to happen to indicate that the, there's a correction. Mm -hmm. um, days on market start going up. We did see that. More price reductions. We are seeing that. A lot more price reductions. Mm -hmm. um, the other third big Point, the third one that'll happen is that seller concessions start happening. Yeah, we don't see where that sellers, right now. Um, you know, we've been in a buyer concession where they're letting sellers stay in the home free for 30 days and waiving inspections and waiving appraisals. And then what she uses as a measurement on that is does it cost the seller any money? So, in right. other words, you know, are the, are the sellers offering uh, money towards their closing costs? Um, are they letting them take possession early or, or you know, they giving them uh, home warranties, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Things that cost the seller money. Yep. We are not seeing that yet. Throwing in the washer so, and dryer, that, that's not really a monetary concession, but it is a concession. Yeah. What she considers so. a, con a correction, all three of those things need mm -hmm. to be happening. Two of them are, the last one is not. So it'll right. be interesting to see the next report and see if uh, we're seeing that or not. So yeah, she said, what's reasonable to expect in the coming weeks? Uh, more list price reductions, right. more days on market, right? fewer offers. Fewer offers over asking price and mm -hmm. lower dollar amounts over asking. Right. Okay. So more seller concessions. She said that's probably likely. We probably are going to mm -hmm. start seeing that as we taper off into the end of the year. Because I feel like the, the sellers are going to go there first before they lower list price. Before they lower their expectation on mm. list price. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Well, I'll, help, I'll give them 1% towards closing costs or, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, seasonal summer slowdown, definitely happening. Didn't right. happen last year. We know we got that. We got a little spoiled. Right. But and now it's, yeah. Yeah. It's time to get back to reality and yeah. what, you know, the typical year usually brings. Here's one that we haven't talked about. Very few foreclosures. Yeah. Oh, foreclosures let still are not. Let me get that number. Uh, that was, that was a great number. Um, it was some 281 foreclosures posted, notices posted in May. How many of those actually foreclosed? 31. 31, yeah. So. 31 of all closings in Maricopa County, and I think she included Pinal County in that too. She mm -hmm. does on some of them. Right. Uh, 31 actually foreclosed. So if yeah. you're waiting for a foreclosure. They're still not coming. It's not much. It's very difficult to come by. Yeah. All right. Thank so, you. Let's okay. um, let's look at some rates real quick. The thirty-year uh, is at five point four zero two, and um, that's actually lower than when we left three weeks ago. It was oh. at five point five four four. So we're actually right. slightly down. Okay. Uh, Fifteen year is at four point four nine five. That also is slightly down. It was nice. at four point five eight nine. And the VA uh, is coming in at 5.040, nice. and that's also down from 5.189. Again, these are indices, and your actual rate 
may be probably, probably will be will lower. Be so lower. contact yeah. your mortgage provider. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that's good. That's pretty good news. I, I'm a little encouraged by that. So that's good. Now this is really interesting. The inventory numbers <laughs> in three okay. weeks. Okay. <laughs> Valley wide. Okay. We are at, and this is only active. Is only active. I don't yeah. count uh, coming soon because you don't know if they're actually going to make it onto the right. market. So we only count active mm -hmm. and the number you got earlier the yeah. 13 included coming soon mm -hmm. so valley wide 10,263 mm. when we wow. left we were at 6,895 wow yeah we've added almost 4,000 homes in wow. three weeks yeah peoria uh okay. we are at 342 now we were at 217 three weeks mm. ago okay. surprise is at 363 and there are 231 now or were 231, we were 231 and yeah. we're now at 363. 363 so well good news is there's inventory there are yeah. some houses to choose from so that's good news for buyers yeah for just, sellers you're gonna have to be a little competitive and you know and be ready to negotiate a little bit uh, closer to home, uh, again numbers are up just slightly they're not any huge uh, jump with the exception of Sun City West. Okay, wow, that is a um, good number for Sun City West. Yeah, yeah. Trilogy at Pistanche has 19 homes available. Okay. The most affordable is 537500 The most expensive is $1,399,000. Mm, wow, okay. Pistanche Village has 24 homes available and there's actually, uh, I think there was nine coming soon, so that number is oh, wow. probably going to be much higher okay. next week. Um, the ranging from 479,900 up to 975,000. Blackstone Country Club has five listings and five none of them listings. are under a million dollars. Not surprised. <laughs> so the most affordable home in Blackstone Country Club is one million dollars on the button. All right. The most expensive, two million nine hundred and fifty thousand. That Keeping was the one that was priced. Now. Well, it was priced at three point two. Oh, okay. That's the one they've done a price reduction, so they're down to two point nine five zero. There's a price reduction for you. Cordobella has nine homes available, 440,000 the most affordable, 897,000 tops the list. Ooh. Sun City Grand has 30 homes available, uh, that's up eight from three weeks ago. Um, most Pretty affordable, 369,000, most expensive, 859,000. Okay. Sun City West is up to 92 homes. Ooh. That's a lot. Um, they were at uh, 53, 53 when we left wow. three weeks that ago, so increase. that's pretty substantial. Now that um, could be, that still could be new, a builder. There's there's some building going on in Sun City West. Yeah, I don't think it'd be that many though. Okay. We'll check it out. It could be, yeah. that could have some play into it. Yeah. Um, so Sun City West has 92, most affordable 249,900, most expensive 897,000. Okay. Oop, that number's incorrect. I apologize. I do not know what the the most expensive oh. Sun City West home is because I sure? pulled one from Portobello. I oh. always have to be careful. Portobello is actually oh. in Sun City West, yes. so to keep them separate, I have to go through and make sure I pull out oh. the Portobello. I see. I, I need to be retrained. I forgot, <laughs> forgot how to, how to do, do my job, job in three weeks. <laughs> my apology. Um, I'll have that straightened out next yeah. week. Finally, Westbrook, Westbrook Village. Village has nine homes available. The most affordable, 399950 and the most expensive, $635,000. All right. All right. That's our report for this that's week. Our report, it's folks. great to be back. Good to be back. Um, yeah, really great to be back to uh, share this with you guys. Please reach out if you have any questions, you have any research you'd like us to do, you're curious about anything that you'd like us to cover, please let us know. We'll be happy yeah. to delve in. And, uh, yeah, with things slowing down a little bit, kind of we're going to start doing some of our walkthrough videos. Yeah, we'll do more community walkthroughs uh, videos, so we'll start linking those into this as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. It's good to be back and at work again. That's right. Recharged. Recharged. All right, everybody have a blessed week and uh, enjoy the great weekend. It is hotter than blazes out there, so <laughs> get is. everything done early and get it done late. Get it done early for sure. <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. Bye. We'll talk to you.